say something. It's like a podcast, but it's a vodcast, so you can listen and watch. It's like news talk or sports talk, but it's life talk, so we can walk the road together. On today's episode, the wonderful Thelma Wells joins us for a kitchen chat. She shares her wisdom on life, relationships, and her profound thoughts on generational love. Thanks for joining the conversation. Here we go. You're here. All right, so today Thelma Wells is joining us, and this is like a dream come true for me. Well, only because I think so much of what we're missing in life is just the, the wise voice that has just, you know, made it through the waters to be able to help, help mm-hmm. those of us that are in the muddy waters in the same way that we can help the ones that are, are younger than us. And so I just love what you're doing with the generational stuff. And so would you tell us a little bit about what's, what the Lord has put on your heart at this season of your life? Oh, yes. It's 75 years of age. You can't be 75. I am. I, I am. <laughs> I'm nearly 76. I love it. Been married 55 years oh, to I the same it. man. Yeah. And, uh, and the Lord has really laid on my heart generations, loving the generations. Now, I've been a mentor. I've been a teacher. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been all of that. But this last year, the Lord gave me this word, generations. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I cannot eat or sleep or anything without thinking about this word, generations, okay? I was at Women of Faith. They always want you to tell your story, a right. story. Well, being with Women of Faith for 20 years, I wasn't going to tell another story, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and having written 40 books with a lot of the stories in them, I wouldn't. So I said, Lord, I, really, I need a story. Mm-hmm. But the story, of course, has to be a real story. Mm-hmm. And so I went to Psalm 100 and read one of my favorite verses, but I had never seen the last part of that. Okay. It says, for the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth mm. to all generations. generations. Now, I had adopted mm. that verse as one of my verses for life because I love the story about Jehoshaphat mm-hmm. and God telling Jehoshaphat and the group, sing here on this mountain. And I'm going to go down and take care of your enemies. And so that says, for the Lord is good. Mm-hmm. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures up to all generations. I had used that even in a court case, that particular verse, but had not noticed the last line of that. Mm-hmm. So in all you're getting, get an understanding. You know, yes. Right. With, with, yes. Wisdom is the essential yes. thing, but in all you're getting, get an understanding. I said, Lord, I don't understand this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he spoke in my spirit. I've never heard him speak audibly. Right. But he said, look at your family. And I thought, I look in my family all the time. <laughs> <laughs> what does he want me to see in my family? So, but he, he opened my mind. And I discovered that I have lived to participate in eight generations of my life. Are you serious? I am so serious. Because the average generation is what? Four. About four yeah, but four, no, that's about a 30 year span. My great great grandmother, who was a Choctaw Indian, lived uh-huh. in a house with my with her daughter, my great grandmother, who raised me. What? Yes. Okay. Where are they from? Choctaw is that Oklahoma? Uh, Oklahoma. Okay. Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. My grandmother is Caucasian, was Caucasian, and black. Uh-huh. Okay. Of course, my mother was a derivative of that, but my mother was born with polio. Really? Yes. And my mother was not able to take care of me. And when I was born, uh, I'm told that her mother put my mother and I out of the house, out of humiliation, out of shame, whatever it was. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So my mother had to make it on her own. However, she couldn't make it on her own because she had a withered hand. Uh She had a a crooked foot. Mm -hmm. And she asked her dad, who loved me dearly, my granddaddy, if... They would take me and raise me, and my grandmother said, "No, I have nothing to do with her." Mm. So that was the best thing she could have done, y'all. Let me tell you, and the reason it was the best thing is because my granddad asked his mother, my great grandmother, mm. mm. who was over sixty years of age, oh, this is so good, if she would take me and nurse me back to health. Mm. And my great grandmother says, "No, I will not. I will keep her." Oh, Thelma. She will become my baby. And my great-grandmother was so wise. 
She never told me that she was upset with her daughter-in-law. She never had anything ugly Mm. to say, Mm. you know, about her. But she would always say, when I got older, baby, remember your mother didn't give you away. Mm. She just let me keep you for a while. Oh, Mm. oh gosh. That's really beautiful. Mm. And uh, living with my great-grandmother was just wonderful. Well, let's talk about the generations. So the next generation is me and my husband. Mm -hmm. We have three children, Mm -hmm. nine grandchildren, and five great-grandchildren. Count that up. That's Mm -hmm. nine Mm -hmm. generations that I've experienced. Well, when when God showed me that, I had never seen it. Last year, I'm 60 of 50 what kind of world am I? 70. I'm 74. Yeah. I'm 74. <laughs> Vicky says I always tell people I'm 50 something. But, uh, but I'm 70 something. At 74 <laughs> years old, I got a glimpse of my family. Yes. You know what I see? I see outstretched arms <laughs> from one yes. end all the way to the other. Yes. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Yes. Mm. And, and in fact, I stayed with my great grandmother until I you know, finished college and all that stuff, until she died. We took her in the house with us when, when, we, oh. when, yeah, when we married. You and your and husband we, brought her husband. here. Absolutely. In Dallas? Well, Were you yeah. in Dallas? Yeah, I was in then? Dallas. Okay. I was in, I, we I were love in Dallas. that. Okay. Yeah, but, but I was never without my great grandmother. Wow. Mm. But, but, didn't, but didn't, weren't the tables turned where she took you in yes. and took care of her, mm. and then you exactly. honored her and That's loved her? Exactly. And, yeah. and, and God switched your roles mm-hmm. and took care of both mm-hmm. of you That's through right. each other. Right. I love it. Yeah. I love and, it. and I had said to her, you will never have to go into a nursing home yeah. mm-hmm. or anything else. Mm-hmm. Okay. And she never did. Mm-hmm. She never did. Wow. So when I, I was listening to all of this in my head and seeing it in my mind's eye, all of these generations, that's when I thought, with all of the experience that you have mm-hmm. and generations, that last verse is talking to you. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you got to do something about it. So and what's the, where's the truth? I, the, the, I circled the word truth when you said that. The truth through the generation. The truth is that before the foundation of the world, God made each one of us. Mm-hmm. And he made our eyes, our nose, our everything. He knew what quote, nationality we were going to be. He knew all about us. And as our loving Father, He made us so differently, yet so much alike. Uh Until no two people have the same DNA. He made us for His glory. Okay? And He set us in the families that He knew we could deal with. Mm -hmm. Are they wonderful? Not all the time. Mm -mm. You know, do we love do we love them? We ought to, but sometimes we don't. Mm-hmm. Do they fight and feud and all this? Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes. Were you, were you do I here last night? I was here. You never know what I'm saying. Yes. We can't get along. Yeah. Without each other, though. You know what I love yeah. about this is we are in a season right now where we want to look at the differences. Yes. And oh, in society. Exactly. And across the board, we really are in a mm-hmm. season obsessed with the differences. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we really are. And so here you come with this truth of, yes. no, there's more sameness than there are that differences. Girl, and then that's I'm right. like, bring it. That's right. I'm going to bring right. it. That's right. We want freedom you, 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 from you, you, this. Yes. You see, what is happening is we've forgotten how our, who our original father is. Yes. Mm-hmm. All of us, all of us have forgotten that. Mm -hmm. We think, you know, that we are it, Mm -hmm. but we're not it. We forget that before the foundation of the world, not only had he made us, but he had also sanctioned Jesus to come. Not only had he done that, he gave us wisdom. That's the one sense that he gave us. He gave every single one of us wisdom. Understanding is something we've got to ask for and get. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. But he gave us wisdom uh, to be able to figure things out. He gave us intellect Mm -hmm. to be able to sit around this table (laughs) and share what we are sharing, each from their own perspective and their own history. Mm -hmm. Isn't that great? That's so exciting. It's good. It it really, really, really really is. is. Yeah. And, and, And so the songs that I sung when I was growing up, are not the songs that are being sung now. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. But it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. You know, the other thing I'm thinking about too is how often do the younger, does the younger generation now sit down and spend some time with their grandmother? Well, I think oh. that's what's hard, and that's why I'm so glad you're doing this mm-hmm. because um, because I've noticed in my own life that that's where it becomes calm. Because it's the, uh, by the way, you're going to get through this. You're, yes. you're going to make it. Yes. Because in the midst, it doesn't feel like you're going to make mm-hmm. it. And you mm-hmm. so desperately need someone to just help you breathe. That's fine. That's fine. And, That's fine. and so I'm, I'm grateful you're doing this. And I'd love to hear some of those pearls of things mm-hmm. like getting away from the differences and how focusing on that really doesn't help anything. It really isolates more mm-hmm. than brings together. It really does. Now, we've got to teach that, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. We've got to teach it. Because we have all of these forces out here mm-hmm. that are telling each one of us how we are to think, mm-hmm. how we are to dress, how we are to eat, how we and it changes from one rock star or whatever to yeah. another. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's you know what I mean? Absolutely. I was watching a show last night with you, and I just took a quick, I don't know, but the girl had these big flowers everywhere, and I said, what is she doing? Uh The next thing you know, we're going to see our kids walking around with these. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. And and we can go through the styles and think which ones Uh are bad, and Uh we hope they Uh never come Uh back, like the shoulder pads that... Oh, my goodness. Mm. And and gauchos, I really hope that one never comes back. But but it is. But what it does make you want to ascribe to that to make you okay. Uh And what I hear you saying is, "Mm -mm, it's not that that makes you okay. It's not that at all. In fact, I'm suggesting that we look at what's good in our families. Uh Because we emphasize too much. What she's doing, he's doing. Da, 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 da. All of us have uh, not me. Well, I talk for myself. I have <laughs> kids in my family and relatives in my family that I don't know who they are. Mm-hmm. They're not acting like who they were born to be. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's right. Because of the influences at home, yes. okay. Mm-hmm. Because of the influences everywhere they go at school. So it is my responsibility as a seventy-five-year-old great grandmother. To hold this family together. When a person decides to have a baby, they decide to keep that baby and be with that baby for the rest of that baby's life yeah. or theirs. Mm-hmm. Okay? And what we do a lot of times is that we turn our children away too early. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. And any time we turn them away, it's too early. Mm-hmm. Okay? Anytime. Anytime Mm -hmm. we turn them away, it's too early. No matter the age. No matter the age. Why? Because we say, well, our kids growing up, they have to make their own choices. They do have to make their own choices. But we need to be right there in the middle of their choices, uh, deciphering whether the choices are good, bad, or indifferent for them, and not be afraid to tell them. Mm -hmm. My children are in their 50s. But when they started having babies, Mm -hmm. I started something called Grandmother Summits. Mm-hmm. Okay, because I said you're not gonna raise your child by yourself. Mm-hmm. I had you, okay, mm-hmm. and I'm not turning you loose. Mm-hmm. Okay, you had them, don't you turn them loose? So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna have a summit. So when my babies started coming, my grandbabies, I would have them over. I don't care how young they were when they had little babies. I got great grandbaby there, and I have her over, and I whisper in her ear, mm-hmm. and I sing to her. And I pray over her, and I tell her I love her, Mm -hmm. and tell her that she will always be loved, and all of that. Now, when they get a little older, of Mm -hmm. course, I get nosy. (laughs) Isn't that a beautiful quality? Yes. (laughs) And I have a grandmother's summit without the parents. Because I want to know what's going on in your house. Mm -hmm. See, if I know what's going on in your house, I know how to pray. Mm -hmm. You know? I'm not going to really meddle in it unless I need to. Mm-hmm. But, <laughs> and that's okay, she said. <laughs> she needs to meddle. If I need to. But the Lord will give me, you know, how to do it correctly. That's what we're missing. How to do it correctly. That's what we're missing, Thelma. The how. Right. Okay. Yeah. So okay. speak on that. Okay. The, the how. Great. Because there's a big difference mm-hmm. between living your, li- living your child's life yeah. for you, yeah. which is a huge trend mm-hmm. right now, which mm-hmm. actually takes away their identity. Mm-hmm. And and so right. the help, the walking alongside, what does that look like? What I have done is that I've studied my children 
very closely. Mm-hmm. I've studied what they like, what they don't like, what their, their sports are, you know. I mean, everything. I've studied that. And the reason I studied it, I didn't want to make a lot of mistakes, but you cannot avoid making some. Right. Okay? This is not a perfect world. Mm-hmm. And I noticed that one of my children, my son, is this comedian. He always laughed, but he was in trouble all the time. When I say trouble, Lord have mercy, I'm so glad they can't put me in jail now. Because <laughs> I did some corporal punishment. <laughs> it's called spanking. Yes, yes. Okay, yes. all right. And he would, <laughs> he would do something real crazy. And then I'd spank him, and he said, oh, Mama, thank you so much. I needed that so bad. And he was a piece of he work. Was a, he still is. <laughs> and, and do you know he'd go and do the same thing over again? Mm-hmm. The same thing. So I studied it. That kind of correction was not helping. Right. Right. That's good. Yeah. Now, if I had uh, spanked Vicky, she probably wouldn't speak on me for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, don't mm-hmm. you put your hands on me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I don't blame her. I'm like that too. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But you study each of the children because they are individuals. Yes. Yes. You can't you know, put them all together. That is one of the reasons, and I'm deviating right now, but that's one of the reasons a mother and a father are needed in a home. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that I could not treat my, uh, teach my son what his daddy mm-hmm. did. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah. I didn't realize that, that my husband can't teach the girls right. what I can. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You see? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But we worked together. And that's the one thing that families need to do. Yeah. Work together. Yeah. Okay. What if in you the, don't have a daddy in the home? Okay. Yeah. That's a great, great... Because uh, uh, I didn't have a daddy mm-hmm. in the home mm-hmm. as right. I was growing. My great, great, great grandfather was there, but he was blind. But my granddaddy was my daddy. Mm-hmm. There, I'm hoping in families, there is some man that can be trusted. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Okay. That can be trusted. If not... You got a daddy. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. <laughs> you have a daddy. Yeah. That's he right. right. And right. he will show you, teach you, lead you when you let him mm-hmm. how to be the mother, the father, the grandmother. Grand. He will teach you that. Mm-hmm. Right. That's what he does because he's your daddy. Mm-hmm. He's your daddy. Mm-hmm. And as your daddy, there is nothing off limits yeah. for him. Mm-hmm. He will teach you that. Mm-hmm. He will show you. But we have to relinquish. Okay. Because we like to hold on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ooh. People in we, general? You, people you're saying? In, yeah, people in we general. Do. Yeah, we like to, we, we need to relinquish that. Um, so true. I, I was about to say just that. It's getting back to that truth. Mm-hmm. And isn't it interesting, as we span the generations, I can talk to my sister. We will Raised in the same house, she recalls the story very differently yes. than I do. Yes, absolutely. So then what is the truth? How did that situation really play out? It played out one way in her head. Mm-hmm. And how can that happen? And two people I, sitting in the I same love room. That, though. That's what I love. That's why I think we're not on this earth alone. I think if yes. you if we were supposed to be here alone, we would be alone. Mm-hmm. And I and it just even in that, I tell my kids all the time, there's things about the Lord that you know that I will never know because you have a relationship with him that's, that's right. not mine. Please tell me what you're learning. Mm-hmm. And and so in as much as it's families, it's the people we have life with too, mm-hmm. that there's so much that the good in it, there's mm-hmm. so much that we can share with yeah. each other that we wouldn't necessarily know if we were alone. That's and right. That's and right. so I, I love what you're doing, getting into the good yeah. rather yeah. than always looking at the bad. Yeah. So yeah. when we talk about what we're teaching, how did you hand down your faith? How did oh, your great-grandmother, oh, oh, you know, because oh, oh, that's oh. one of the most important things that's, we can hand down yes, it is. to our children. That's the reason I said the best thing that ever happened to me is that my great-grandmother to me. She was a woman of the word, had a third-grade education. I love it. Stumbled through the words of the Bible, but she read the Bible every day, Mm -hmm. okay? I saw that. I saw it being lived out, okay? Uh, She she worked in the church. I was in church seven days a week. Mm -hmm. That's too much church, (laughs) okay? uh, (laughs) Okay. 
I'm getting out into the whole lot of church, okay? <laughs> but let me tell you. <laughs> I was in church on Monday night for mission, Tuesday night for Lady Dog Zero, Wednesday night for prayer meeting, Thursday night. Yeah, it is that. I, I recall so, the thir- same with myself. <laughs> Thursday night for choir rehearsal, Friday night yeah. teachers meeting. We have cleaned up the church on Saturdays, and black folks used to stay in church all day all Sunday. Day. All day. Uh-huh. Go home so, for a dinner break and come back. Uh, and, then, and then we'd have teas. That's where I learned social graces and, and all of that. That's where I learned to, to, to do a lot of the things that I'm doing because we were there all the time. That was a staple mm-hmm. for us at yes. that time. Okay? So, because I saw the Bible mm-hmm. being read, because I was in church all the time hearing those good things, okay? Because my great granddaddy, who was blind, taught me how to get rid of fear. I gotta tell you this story. Mm -hmm. People would come to the door. We lived in an upstairs apartment on Thomas Avenue in Dallas, Texas. Mm -hmm. Okay? People would come to the door though, and I would scream and holler. You know how girls have nightmares or children have? Because I thought it was the boogeyman, I thought it was a monster. My great granddaddy <laughs> called me to that screened in front porch one day and said, Pooch, that's what my granddaddy has yeah. called to me. My granddaddy, my great granddaddy. Mm-hmm. Pooch, do you want to get rid of that fear? Uh huh. Because I'm crying. Out of he said, Okay. He was blind. He said, You're going to have to close your eyes. I was kidding. No, you're going to have to close your eyes. This is what I want you to do when you close your eyes. I want you to say the 23rd Psalms and the Lord's Prayer, mm-hmm. one behind the other. 23rd Psalms, Lord's Prayer. 23rd Psalms, Lord's Prayer. And I want you to keep your eyes closed and say that until you feel like you can open your eyes. Mm-hmm. I trusted him. Mm-hmm. I loved him. And so I closed my eyes. And I said, and at, at a small, at small, at young age, we were taught the 23rd Psalms mm-hmm. and the Lord's Prayer and all that. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can repeat it one after the other, one after the other, one after the other, one after the other. And when I opened my eyes, I, I didn't fear, feel any fear. And I opened my eyes and I looked through that screened in front porch and the clouds in the sky had formed the busk of Jesus. Mm. And I've never had any fear of anything but one thing since then. I don't like rats. <laughs> I'll join you with that. I can't stand it. I can't stand it, girl. I can't stand it. I love it. But, but he taught me where to put my fear. Mm-hmm. Put it in the hands of Jesus. And he gave you God's word yeah. to, to combat yeah. that fear. And that that's something that I am very interested in from what I write about, what I what books I read, the way I parent, mm-hmm. is that it is my job to give them um, God's word yes. and to make sure that they yeah. are uh, biblically literate right. yeah. and that they know truth. Because I hear mm-hmm. everything you're speaking about is speaking truth, mm-hmm. but it's God's truth. Because I think even the word truth is up for grabs. <laughs> yeah, it is. The word, of course it is, is the word. in our society. When you look back over your life, like what are some of those those hurdles that um, mm. that were big to you that that you could even for the people walking alongside you said, "Let me tell you, you can get through. You will get yeah. through." My granddaddy, the men in my life were wonderful. Would take me to the Majestic Theater downtown Dallas. Mm-hmm. The Majestic Theater was as segregated as I don't know what because we had to go up the back stairs mm-hmm. at the Majestic Theater. We had to eat the stale candy mm-hmm. and the the weevils and the popcorn, et cetera, et cetera. It was a movie theater. It was a movie theater, right. down, yes, downtown Dallas. My granddad would take me on this date every weekend and he would take me to the Majestic Theater. Mm-hmm. And he said, Pooch, they both call me Pooch. I'm going to teach you something. You see, we had to come up the stairs. We couldn't sit down there with the rest of the people. Mm. He said, well, I want to assure that you that one day you're going to be able to get a ticket and sit downstairs mm. and go front row center mm-hmm. because life is not going to be like this mm-hmm. always. Mm. Now, you have to be ready to go. 
Hmm. So <laughs> you study your lessons, you do your homework, you be whatever, and know that there is nothing in the world that you cannot do hmm. if you put your mind hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. I heard that. Over and over and over. And over. And yeah. over. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You can do it. Yeah. You can, you do, can it. do it. That the you words, do it. The words that were spoken life. over you were life. You, life. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and then you went and lived them. Mm -hmm. So, when I was in college, I went to the, I went to, it wasn't a university at that time, North Texas State. Mm -hmm. Okay? I didn't even know the name of another college other than Bishop College, uh -huh. than North Texas State. But my great grandmother lived and worked in service. That's what you know, she was here, worked in, in, in a, a domestic. Okay. okay. And your she, grandmother. My, my, your great my great, okay. my great grandmother okay. who raised me. Okay. Yeah. I'll tell you about my grandmother later. Mm -hmm. She's another story. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> when I graduated from high school, I had high grades. In fact, I was the, the third most highest ranking girl in mm -hmm. that school. But there were no, there were no uh, scholarships like there are now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my great grandmother went to the lady she worked for, Miss Mary Les, mm -hmm. and she said, "Miss Les, my grandbaby's worked hard. She needs to go to college. We don't have any money mm -hmm. to send her to college. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea what we can do?" Miss Les said, "Bring her out here." So I went out to Mrs. Mary Les' house. Very, very wealthy people here in in in. Uh, uh, where are we? Dallas. Yeah, I know, but I'm talking about <laughs> what area. Are you in? Park City. Okay. Park, Park City, Park. thank mm -hmm. you so much. Yeah, in Highland Park. And that's what I was thinking. Okay. Uh, uh, and so when I went out there, Mrs. Les said, uh, where do you want to go to school? I said, uh, Denton. I didn't even know the name of the school. Wow. And she said, oh, okay. She said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to send you to school with two requirements. If your grades fall below a C, or if you get married before you graduate, I'm through. But I will send you to school. Mm -hmm. I was educated mm -hmm. by a woman that lived in Highland Park. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. and, and I did get married before I graduated, but she was dead then because she died in a plane crash. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I knew then, oh, let me tell you about the school, though. I was one of the first uh, uh, black kids that were permitted to stay on campus uh, at North Texas. Okay. Okay. We had to live off campus. We had to walk to school, okay, off the track, behind the tracks, okay. I lived in the pink house, and it was a pink house because it's painted pink. Right. The other kids lived in the gray house because it was the gray house because it was painted gray at whatever color house. But we walked together. Yeah. We held we held each other up, okay, because it was hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was hard. But when they allowed us in to get to the the um, dormitory, there were five of us, and they picked us because of our academic achievement. Because mm -hmm. we couldn't belong to anything. We couldn't do it being any sorority. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be nothing like that. Mm -hmm. They put us in a, uh, what is it? Something street hall. Anyway. But, but beside the boiler room, there were five of us mm -hmm. in the room. We did not have beds. We had cots with uh, uh, mattresses mm -hmm. on them. Mm -hmm. Okay? Well, that was good because that was an achievement. We, we, we appreciated that. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think sometimes we kind of got a little arrogant because we were the selected girls. Mm -hmm. I went uh, to, we lived in the dorm, and, and I had to go back to school for something one day. And in the dorm, we had the meal tickets. Y'all tomorrow don't know nothing about meal tickets. You know anything about that? You don't know nothing about meal tickets. Yeah, when I was in yeah, dorm. I was you, 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 when I was in okay. school, we had yeah. those. Mm -hmm. and, and I came into the school, into the uh, eating area, because I had to go back to school. And I skipped in front of my roommate, one of my roommates. And when I skipped, a girl on the other side, did you see that nigger? Oh, no. Y'all, I have to admit, I lost my mind. Mm. I had a fight, my first fight in school. I went over there and beat that girl like I don't know what. That was so wrong. That was so wrong. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what snapped in me. 
I really don't. Well, they got the girl out of the dorm. I stayed in the dorm, and I was on probation for a whole, <laughs> whole year. It's okay. Because <laughs> I was going home on the weekends anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but I asked, I had never been enraged like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Never, ever, ever. And I have often asked myself, what yeah, triggered that? you? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, what triggered you to mm-hmm. do that? Mm-hmm. Because I've never done that since. So where do you okay. land when you, because, I mean, and here goes the wisdom mm-hmm. being passed down <laughs> because there are things that enrage us, that, that it's shocking. And what do uh-huh. you do? What How do, do, do you do? react? And Well, I, I've tried to figure that out a long time. Mm-hmm. However... I think it helped me understand more about people who didn't understand me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Really? And it caused me to be cautious about how I treated other people. And that opened doors for me. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you what doors it opened. When I got out of college, I uh, taught school for a little while. Couldn't stand. But I, I think that I was, was just I what was people teaching. did. I mean, yeah. I feel like yeah. you either were a nurse or that's a teacher. That's right. Yes. yes, that's right. And whether you were good at it or yeah. not, yeah. or even liked yeah. it, those yeah. were the options. Well, that that's really right. And uh, I was teaching football players how to type. The typing class. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which... Well, they don't oh, have anymore. No, but don't you remember it? Oh, yeah. I, I, yeah. The, rocket, yes, the yes. rocket on the back of the wall with how many uh, minutes, like how many yeah. words per minute. I bet that was mind-numbing. I hated it. Was that. Mind-numbing yeah. it was mind-numbing taking it. So I said, Lord, open the door for me. And he did. Mm-hmm. They, I was called by a John Deere company, by a lady who knew about John Deere company. Okay. And she said, John Deere needs a woman an educated woman, a nice-looking woman, because they've got to meet their quota. Mm-hmm. Now, this was in 19... It was, this was 63 now. Okay. It was 1963. Mm-hmm. We had gone from the 1952 edict. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. No more segregation. Right. Okay. 63. So I went over to John Deere Company and uh, walked into Mr. Bill Malone's office and he said, oh, you're the lady that sent, sent to interview? And I said, yes. He said, let me see your degree. I said, I don't have it, but I can produce it for you. He said, mm, yeah, you look nice. Can you type? Yes, sir. Okay, you got your job. And you said, so I, I, I teach typing. <laughs> <laughs> I got the job as the first black woman yeah. ever in the Southwest to be in a status Position they call the secretary status at that time because mm-hmm. it was a status position at John Deere Company, mm-hmm. and I worked at John Deere Company. It was gruesome at first. I bet because they had never worked with a black person yes. wow. before. So when I got there, rather than them giving me the secretarial job, I got the job as a mail clerk, mm-hmm. and I almost got angry, mm-hmm. but then I thought. Mm-mm. Okay, you gotta prove yourself. Mm-hmm. So I would walk around to all of the desks, uh, de- 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 leaving the mail, and I would say, "Hello, Mr. So and So. Hello, Miss So and So. Hello. How are you doing today?" I would be the real Thelma. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and they started liking me. However, I discovered something. On Mondays, all of the women would bring uh, the recipe that they made over the weekend uh-huh. mm-hmm. and share it with everybody, and they all had Tupperware. Oh, of course. I had brown bags. Mm-hmm. Okay? So I decided, i got to find me some of this stuff. You know, mm-hmm. well, what is all this stuff? They, you know, bringing that there. Yeah, and it wasn't sold I, in a store. It was yeah, not. No, 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 it was not. Yeah, 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 I, I had never, the home yeah, yeah, I had never right. been invited to, right. to the Tupperware party. Yeah. Yep. So finally... I got some Tupperware. I don't even remember how you I got it. You the blue chip stamps? We used to go Girl, yes. Stamps. Yes. Yes. Are you kidding? Absolutely. You know nothing about that. I, but know, right? <laughs> I remember my mom going to a Tupperware party. <laughs> green, stamps. Green, green stamps. stamps. green stamps. Green stamps. Green stamps. Green stamps. Green stamps. And Absolutely. there was a green stamp store that you could get. Yes, it was. I mean, it was yeah. wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then I noticed that I was not dressing appropriately. Because they wore skirts and blouses. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I had little gingham dresses or whatever. So I decided, I'm going to go buy me some stuff. So I went and bought me some skirts and some blouses and some Tupperware. <laughs> 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 like, 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 are 
<clears throat> and, 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 wait a let me tell you one more thing. Mm-hmm. And they, they, they gave the recipes out every oh, Monday. So when they brought the food, they brought, they, they brought, they brought the, recipe the recipe with them? I didn't have a recipe for nothing. Oh, I bet you My did. recipe is... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how my mom taught me to cook. That's right. It's just, so that's, I went and that. joined a recipe club. Wow. Okay. And I got these pretty little cards. So I had, I knew I had to assimilate. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's good. And a lot of times we don't realize, even today, that if we're going to move up and wherever we are, we've got to assimilate with the right things. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Kids assimilate. We assimilate. Mm-hmm. But it's always... Uh, not always, but a lot of times it's the wrong assimilation. Mm-hmm. Pants that you can't mm-hmm. pull up. Assimilating. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, 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 cho- you chose things that would move you forward with, right. without yeah. taking you backward. That's you right. knew where you wanted to go. That's right. You had a vision and said, I mean, even, in, and I know some people would say, she should be able to wear her gingham dresses. And what, but but, 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 but yeah. she could wear her gingham dress. And, but, but, and and what I hear you saying is that you were never, a, it wasn't a victim mentality. Right, right. 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 And, and that is a huge... It was progressive mentality. It was. Because I wanted to move up. Right, so, and it was also, I'm going to engage and I'm going to do my best. Because that also is another huge trend in culture these days, is the I'm owed mentality. Oh, yes. Lord, I walk yes. in and the, and, the, and the environment changes to meet my needs mm-hmm. instead of me yes. not changing in the core but adapting and working within and doing your best within. It's also because of what your great-grandparents yes, handed yes, down yeah. to you because mm-hmm. we can also hand down fears. Have that's you right. not met a oh, person? Oh, you know what I'm saying? So For people, a person who's like, I'll never get an airplane. Yeah. And my mama yeah. never would get Because they're mm-hmm. handing down that fear. Yeah. And they're afraid mm-hmm. to try. So they're wow. facing mm-hmm. just, just, I love that your great grandfather sat you down in the movie theater and, mm-hmm. and spoke over you. Mm-hmm. And then when you got the job, you know, you knew, okay, I'm going to. Did you look these. back at some point and go, get out? I did go to the movie. You know, it. Uh, you know, I did. Or, I, I, I guess I was so happy that I could go down. Right. I just had all this. Uh, pride, not false pride on there, right, but right. I was just delighted and that his words came yeah. true yeah. because I could trust him. Right. You right. see, I was delighted about that. The, uh, the, the other thing about your children, Vicki and I, and I'm going fast forward, but Vicki and I decided to work together in 1991. Uh, and Vicki's Vick, your daughter. Vicki's my daughter. Mm-hmm. I didn't like her. <laughs> she knows it. <laughs> because I had studied her enough to know that our communication level was not the same. Mm-hmm. She was very quiet. She sat in her room. She didn't want us to bother her about anything. She would have magazines all over it, books all over it. And I would say, dinner's on the table. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's not the response you want. <laughs> <laughs> and I take her out and introduce her to people. Vicky, this is Miss So and So. Now I'm about ready to choke her. Okay. And I'm trying to say, well, Vicky, yeah. Sense. Right. 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 Okay. <laughs> but it's, it's that mother. Oh, 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 that she gets that yeah. Your teeth are gritted, yeah. but there are so you, many this, messages oh, no. coming right. through. Right. It, <laughs> it did not stop. Right. Okay. So I had to say, okay, Lord, give me the strength to deal with this girl. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. she is so different yes. from me. And to accept her right where she is. To accept. Mm-hmm. And I said to her one day, you make me so mad. You act like you don't have any home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she said, Mama, I'm not you. Mm-hmm. I don't even want to be like you. Mm-hmm. This was when she was very young. So that's why I said I didn't like her. Because I thought I was wonderful. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, she got older. She got more social when she got in, in junior high school and blah, 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 blah. And then uh, I really began to like her a little bit when she went to college because we were separated. That was a great thing. And then, <laughs> and then we started working together. Uh-huh. Now I was 
Oh, Lord. I was so scared of that. I didn't know what to do. So, she would, I, would, I would say to her, Vicky, have you done so-and-so? Yes. I Where's said, the rest of the sentence? Uh, I, know, <laughs> I, know. I know. I said, Lord, help me. Give me, I need some help with this girl because I'm going to hurt her. <laughs> I said, and do you know when you ask for help? Yeah. God is always ready. Mm-hmm. Morris Briggs came to my mind. The first personality. Right. I was, yeah. was going to say. Morris yeah. Briggs. Yeah. And I went and I bought the Morris Briggs. And I said, you know, we need to take this. Mm-hmm. We took that. And both of our eyes were so opened. Because she's somewhat of an introvert. Mm-hmm. Very studious. Very mm-hmm. all that. I want to talk. Yes. Okay. And, and that was not her motivation. Mm-hmm. I thanked God mm-hmm. in 1991 that we were able to begin to work together to understand each other. Mm-hmm. Because that's what's wrong with a lot of families now. They just don't understand. Why aren't they like me? Mm-hmm. Well, she acts so much like her daddy. You know. And we blame people for things they don't need to be blamed for. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I want to tell these people, these parents and all, study your children, but find some help. Mm-hmm. If you need to go talk to a psychologist, a psychiatrist, yeah. or whatever it is, psychologist, yeah. find out about them. Get in the book. Read the book. Mm-hmm. Because it will tell you no two people are alike. Mm-hmm. Stop mm-hmm. charging up your kids mm-hmm. and, and saying, well, your daddy was just like that. And that's why we're not together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Don't do that kind of talk. Yeah, right. But people hear that. They hear, you know, they hear right. all these kinds of things. And it deflates right. their image, mm-hmm. their ego. Yep. And it's the it's speaking life. It's yes, yeah. right. We you have to speak life. life. Okay. Yeah. okay, I should. Not to waste my life She said spread your wings My little butterfly Oh my goodness And she did <laughs> spread her wings She traveled all over the world She's done many, many, many things She was a Dallas Cowboy cheerleader And all that kind of stuff And guess what? I never worried about her Her daddy did But I had no problems with that at all All the stuff that you're seeing on this computer Guess what? She did it Because she is so creative No, 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 no oh. It's because of you And I want to thank you because this generation conference is all about mothers, daughters, sons, and hey, oh my gosh, <laughs> three generations, four generations loving each other. Come to Generation Love. <laughs>